Hi guys, I am Vivek Kaliwal and uh, welcome to the first video of the Patient Marketing Series. Today we have with us, uh, today I have with me uh, Sanket Shah from InVideo. Uh, Sanket is the founder and CEO at InVideo. Right? Uh, and today we will basically discuss uh, why should you be going all in uh, with your video strategy in 2019. Right? Uh, so Sanket, you know, why don't we start with a quick introduction about yourself? Correct. So uh, this was, uh, uh, you know, I'm Sanket, as he said, uh, and I run in video here. I'm one of the three founders. Um, so back in 2012, actually, I used to uh, create a bunch of videos while I was still at University of Michigan. And those videos actually did very well on YouTube. Uh, that is when I said that, hey, uh, the videos are doing well, but the cost of production and the time it takes to produce uh, is very large. And uh, that is when I actually decided that I want to do something in video at some point. Uh, however, things just didn't work out the way I thought it would. And I ended up starting another company which got acquired in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's when I decided that, hey, uh, you know, next time I do something, I really want to uh, do it in video. And that is when uh, we decided that uh, the next gig that we want to do as founders would be uh, starting this company. And in 2017, mid 2017 is when uh, we started um, in video. Uh, so today we are supported by several marquee brands uh, like CNN, uh, News 18, uh, CNBC, Money Control, Republic Television, uh, India TV, and several others. Right, awesome. Well, that's a that's a great start. Right. So Sankit, you have been long on video as a format. Right. Uh, why? Why are you so bullish on video as a format? I think that's going to be the toughest question of the entire webinar. But anyway, uh, so uh, think about uh, when, you know, as human beings, when we are living, uh, we are living in surroundings that are constantly moving. Uh, that is uh, audio. So people talking and then uh, birds chirping or uh, the honks honking and uh, all of that. Right. So actually, if you fundamentally start thinking about it, uh, then uh, you are living in a video. Uh, the only difference is it's 3D. Uh, with everything moving over the internet, your next best alternative is actually that same video. And since our screens don't allow 3D, uh, 2D is the best medium. And uh, that's the only plausible logical explanation regarding why video uh, will work, uh, why uh, it's, it has tremendous potential, uh, because it's actually an extension of the world that we already live in. And uh, I don't know, but uh, that's, the, uh, that's, that's our belief, and that is why uh, we are doing what we are doing. So this is a very interesting perspective, right? I've never uh, heard this uh, before, right? that, that how video is so, so similar uh, to the way we live, right? And, how, uh, and probably that's why uh, it sort of drives, uh, it, it attracts so much attention from everyone. So again, more importantly, uh, how did this belief come into shape? Uh, what really happened to figure this? So I think that, you know, people were moving on to short form content. Uh, I, so I, I'm a huge consumer of uh, books at this point, but uh, a few years back, uh, I actually battled short attention span. Uh, I just couldn't get through the content in the books. Uh, it's pretty slow to read. Uh, and uh, uh, with the generation coming in, you need to shoot the information very quickly. So actually a lot of research went into it. So I would have interviewed at least 250, 300 people uh, comparing about giving them a page to read and then giving them a video to watch and then taking feedback about, uh, you know, why it's going to be better. And that is when we started thinking why it is so good. And uh, of course, all of this is backed by research. Uh, why, uh, uh, you know, visual, visually when you are conveying things, you can convey emotional information. Uh, think about it, right? Uh, in a video, I can get out my emotions versus a picture. I really can't tell you. And it takes a lot of time to actually convey that information. So uh, visuals are definitely processed few thousand uh, times faster uh, and it helps uh, your memory it helps decision making and uh, more importantly it also helps uh, to create great relationships right and uh, again uh, the answer is it's almost an extension of what we are living in and 
it act, so there's a bunch of research, a minimum viable product that we have made, uh, several uh, things that we did before saying that this format is definitely going to work. Yeah, awesome. No, thanks for that. Uh, very intriguing uh, stuff. So, so okay. now, uh, retail uh, is typically at the forefront of technology adoption, right? Uh, now, I understand that videos are powerful, right? We also understand why videos are powerful, right? There's not only research which states that, there's also, you know, hardcore facts which sort of capture that same concept. Now, my, my question then to you really is, and again, this is because uh, we at ISOTO also work very closely with retailers. You also have a fair amount of experience working with retailers, both large and mid-size. Uh, tell me, and why are retailers not crazily adopting this channel right now? What is it that is actually stopping them from doing so? Correct. So I want to answer this question in two parts. Uh, so, uh, you know, it requires a lot of education to almost build the market. Uh, we all know that, that it takes time for people to understand, people to adopt, people to start using it. And I think that we are on the bottom of the hockey stick curve, uh, where people are still trying to figure out what is going to work, why is it going to work, uh, what can you do. Uh, one of the most important things is also to do with the psyche of uh, people. So, for example, when you think about videos, right, uh, what do you think about? You think about the movies that you watch, you think about the ads you see. And then immediately when you look at the video, I, in that format, you realize that it's going to be extremely expensive. Uh, you will require professional expertise and it will require a lot of time. So, and again, uh, when we do our market research, we keep talking to several people uh, regarding what they think, why they are not using it. And uh, one of the most favorite answers is that they think it's very cumbersome and expensive. Uh, and whenever, uh, you know, you're trying to change few things, it's, it takes, actually, it takes a lot of time. Uh, although, uh, and there are definitely early adopters, but for, uh, mass adopting, uh, this format, uh, it's going to take, uh, a few years. And, uh, that is when we will think that, you know, it, it, it was really quick, but it's actually not because you're working through your way to making sure, uh, that, uh, the adoption happens. Um, uh, but before that, the education happens, right? But uh, the most common answer that we have always seen is that uh, videos are difficult and cumbersome. And uh, that's a logical, uh, a logical explanation why uh, you're not seeing it. But uh, if you just now scroll through your Instagram feed, uh, uh, you'll realize uh, that the number of Instagram ads in a video format are so large. Uh, similar things are happening with Facebook and YouTube because YouTube, you don't have any, anyway, you don't have any other option, right? So, uh, and it's the second largest search uh, engine. So people are adopting. It's just going to, uh, it, they're just not adopting at the pace at which we imagine. Right. Or imagine. Right. Uh, so, you know what, I completely, I, I completely agree with your uh, you know, point here that uh, video making it, itself always appears to be an art, right? Uh, and and for that matter, it appears to be an expensive art, right? Uh, right. And again, you know, uh, this problem has has only been solved in the recent years that, that video making can be now done through a simple handheld device, right? Uh, which sort of allows you to, to quickly shoot, uh, upload, and you know, distribute video. That's something right. that's, you know, not yet uh, very popular. Uh, right? uh, great, awesome. You know, I think uh, that sort of uh, uh, really answers the question. Uh, very well. Now, thinking about healthy example, right? Uh, if so, if the large, so uh, from a pure relevance point of view, right? Now, what do you think about retailers specifically, right? Uh, you know, should retailers should uh, how should the retail space really be, you know, going about uh, uh, using videos, right? All right. Yeah. So, correct, and uh, uh, so. So most retailers will today also have uh, an online storefront. So I have a uh, very similar, uh, I, I, will, I will believe about, you know, why people build websites and why people have e-commerce companies and uh, how uh, we think internally is uh, just think about a retailer or their extension, which is an e-commerce website or only e-tailers uh, today, right? What are they actually? They're actually a storefront. Uh, 
uh, where customers are coming in now if any e-commerce website or any e-tailer becomes if you start imagining them like a storefront where customers are coming in and salesmen inside the store are actually serving them uh, things become actually very simple right so e-commerce what happens when that particular storefront wants to expand quickly uh, he has to actually provide that similar experience on the website or via video or via whatever that is so whenever you go to a storefront uh, what do you tell a retailer uh, what do you tell a retailer right you might tell a retailer that hey uh, show me where the sneakers are and that retailer will take you uh, and then uh, take you to the shelf where there are uh, you know several shoes however with uh, the way world is moving uh, we have little time people are shopping online uh, and uh, we are moving from the extension of you know we are moving on to the extension of our world which is uh, in 2d which is on our mobile phones and which is on a laptop because that is where we spend uh, a lot of time uh, a retailer's job is actually to give a, almost an in-store experience on your mobile phone and on your laptop and that is when they will do video mm-hmm. and and if they think very logically about this, uh, what what kind of videos they should do, how what information they should convey, it's almost an analogy to what a customer is asking you in the store, mm-hmm. and uh, that is how I uh, see this growing overall. Right. So if I was going to a, a store and uh, there was a woman uh, in an electronic store who was uh, showing me how to use the washing machine, I would learn from that person. Uh, that same extension is something that I actually deserve uh, on my mobile phone as well as on my laptop. Uh, I, similarly, I deserve the top selling items. Similarly, I deserve a list of sneakers that I can buy from a store because that is what would have happened to me if I would have gone in the showroom. Got it. So, Sikhir, okay, I, I, uh, let's say I buy into the analogy of, uh, of doing, uh, you know, uh, I buy, I buy into the analogy of uh, that, yes, you know, the retail experience needs to be as smooth, uh, uh, the, the online experience needs to be as smooth as in store experience, right? But uh, then the question sort of becomes, uh, uh, is this only for large retailers who are trying to go online or who are only online? Right? Who, uh, who, is, who should be really looking at uh, video as, uh, as a marketing strategy? Should be, uh, are these the small guys? Uh, are these the mid-sized guys? Are these the large guys? Who are we looking so, at? So, again, great question. And, uh, you know, a very cliched answer to that. Uh, yeah. uh, there's nothing like uh, one size fits all strategy for this. Uh, mm-hmm. The question is actually, uh, what are we trying to do, big or small? Uh, what are the right kind of videos? What do, do your customers actually want? What are the resources you have? And what the budget do you have? Right. What is your distribution strategy? So says several answers. Uh, I can just divide it actually into several parts, but uh, I'll just hit on a quick point uh, mm-hmm. before that. Right. So the use cases are actually derived in person. Uh, basically, if I had to sell it by meeting that person, what would I tell that person? Mm-hmm. Those are the videos you might want to create. Now, big or small different scale, different size, but that's all you want to tell. When Flipkart runs a big billion day sale, it's, it, it wants to tell uh, 30 million, 20 million people that, hey, I'm running a large sale. Uh, if they had to tell 30 million people via salesman, they would require 3 million salesmen saying that, hey, we have the largest sale. That's actually what we are doing uh, overall. And me and you as well, right? When we go on to create the right landing page, we are almost emulating what a salesman would tell that particular customer. So similarly, when they think like that, the use cases and what they should do start becoming very easy. So what does a salesman do? He's going to show you a product. What does, what do you look at in the product? You will look at the star, uh, you know, you look at the quality of the product, which is the star rating with social proof. You want to look at the price. Uh, you want to look at variety of things that are available. You want to look at how can you look at a particular product. And that is when it becomes super easy about what you should do. Now, further on, uh, to make it simple for a retailer or uh, an e-commerce company, 
uh, I've bifurcated things into several parts. Uh, these parts are basically what are the different kind of videos can be made. And the first part of that is hero content. Uh, the word hero, uh, because it requires a lot of money uh, and it requires Rithik Roshan or Brad Pitt. Uh, so when you look at hero content, you're talking about companies like Walmart and you're talking about companies like Amazon who can afford doing and running large ads, uh, campaigns, uh, which are also supported by large peripherals. So of course, this budget can go up to crores, uh, crores of rupees, right? So that is one kind of content that these companies will definitely uh, create. Uh, the second kind of content that I call a hub content is uh, where uh, you're giving them instructional videos, where you're just building your brand in a very basic way, uh, where you are answering uh, the FAQs that you would need. Now, let me ask you a question actually before that, right? Uh, when you go and sell your product uh, at any place, do you almost always know what are the questions that are going to come in the mind? Typically, yes. You do sort of almost try to get that, those questions. Yeah. And, and what do you do uh, about that? Do you create an FAQ page? That's usually what you would do for standard questions that I ask. Yeah. And you will almost want to guide the user on the software about how to use it. Yes, that's onboarding. Yes, absolutely. It's, and it has to be alike for a retailer. When you go to buy a washing machine, you are going to ask how, how many kgs can it take? What is going to be the price? What is going to be the warranty? When can I get it delivered? Will someone come to set it up? And, and that is when a mid-market e-commerce company or a large company will want to attract a customer. Right? They'll want to actually help them decide. They want to support that customer. Now, of course, this can be done with some budget, which is not because you don't need Rithik Roshan for that, right? Uh, or you don't require Brad Pitt for that. So this can happen in a much smaller budget with a much smaller team. But that is the content that a mid-market e-commerce company can and should create. And then the third type of content that they can create is hygiene content. Now, uh, hygiene content, I think it's the most abused word as a marketer, but uh, let's talk about several cases, right? So let's talk about uh, Snapdeal uh, in the first go. So Snapdeal, uh, one of the largest e-commerce companies in India, they would want to show what are the top products that are on sale today for a guy between 25 to 40 years. He can quickly create an Instagram ad. He can quickly create an Instagram video, uh, uh, an Instagram story or a Facebook ad or a YouTube ad. Now, what happens is uh, uh, we all almost uh, hate working large cross-functional teams because your dependencies increase and uh, we all like to blame each other for uh, what happened and why something couldn't go live. This is when they can use very smart tools uh, of course, like in video to create this content, take the control in their head and then move on. How difficult is it? Should it be to tell that, Hey, this customer is bragging about me on the app store. Now let me transform this app store content into a great video and push it out on other platforms. So this is when the hygiene content actually comes into play. Now, uh, if I have to reiterate, right, hero content, of course, uh, a smaller e-commerce brand should not think about doing it at that certain stage. However, an Amazon and Flipkart should definitely do that, but that has to be piggybacked via hub content and hygiene content. So although you require large production teams and uh, you know, massive budgets for hero content, hygiene content is something that uh, you can just pick up uh, with uh, three hours of, uh, you know, three hours a week and $20 a month and then uh, run with it. Got it. So, that's a broader answer, right? So everyone can do, uh, it's simple, right? Uh, the question that you asked me uh, uh, and how an e-commerce company should relate to is, uh, who can buy a car? Hey, uh, you know, Bill Gates has a car, but he might have a Bentley, but I also want a car and I might have a Honda Civic or a Honda City. Uh, it might very well be second hand, but I still have it. And it almost does a similar job for my audience. Right. So Sankey, now help me understand this. What do you think is the right time for somebody to start looking at uh, or start creating hygiene content and hub content? Uh, so let's say I'm a, bit, uh, I'm a retailer who's just starting off uh, you know, uh, with our e-commerce portal, right? You know, when exactly should we be looking at video seriously? So you should be looking at uh, video seriously now. 
uh, because people are engaging with it, people are sharing it more. Uh, it's easy to convey the information you want to convey uh, very quickly. For example, with a banner, you have a banner uh, with a video, uh, you might have six seconds mm -hmm. and you can convey the most important information like that, right? So uh, since, it, since today it's possible that it doesn't, you don't require large budgets uh, to do this. Uh, you should start, you should think about starting today and it's going to take around three uh, months to streamline the process to understand what's working, why is it working, what's getting more views and then move on. So, uh, and it's possible to do it. You don't require a video editor. Uh, all you require is content that you might already have and start transforming that content into a hygiene content, uh, in, in, into a video. And I, I will show you multiple examples of uh, how that can happen. Uh, uh, you know, later in the presentation. Awesome. So, so, so keep my head on that, right? Uh, what are the different kinds of videos that can be made, right? Now, I understand there is the classification of hero, hab, and hygiene, right? But uh, uh, when I'm just starting off uh, as a business, when I'm just starting off setting up my marketing team and content team, right? you know, what should I be looking at uh, in terms of the first set of video content which we need to make? Absolutely. Right. So, uh, there's several, uh, things that you can do and, uh, all the videos that by the way, I'll show you, uh, on, uh, today's presentation are actually created by me within five minutes to one hour, depending on the complexity of the video. Uh, mm -hmm. let me uh, actually take you through things and, uh, show you what happens. Right. So, uh, here's the first video and, uh, this is a live video of Snapdeal, right. Uh, okay. and, uh, it is almost uh, a beautiful template that works with the right colors, right things coming in. As I said, right, there, there was a sale. Here's the sale price. Here are the booths. Here's the percentage of what the sale is. And that's pretty much it. Right. So that's one. It's a product video. It's almost what a salesman would do. I want to buy shoes that are on sale. Can I see it? Hey, here's the shelf. See it. The shelf is just not the physical shelf. The shelf is this product video. This it's this product ad, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much right. And the advantages of uh, doing this are several, right? You can create uh, product videos very quickly. Uh, you can create up to two hundred videos a month for close to thirty dollars a month, and uh, you can integrate all sorts of API. Uh, you can transfer data, and you can do it. And uh, being honest, right, uh, there are several uh, companies who would help you do it. InVideo is one, uh, one of them. And uh, it will definitely help with conversions. It will uh, definitely help with uh, distribution when you do it because you are actually exposing it to different mediums. Now, uh, let's talk about an instructional video. Uh, this video, for especially instructional videos for companies, uh, you know, for countries like Indonesia, Brazil, India, where the GDP is growing, uh, people are getting disposable income uh, today and are looking to buy products but might not know what to buy uh, because uh, of the high illiteracy rates in these countries because of uh, uh, people still living not in metro cities without this much exposure right so you want to know what we need to do uh, and a company helping them with an instructional video is one of the best things right? so let's just quickly see thank you very coming three times Solo grill convection. Here is a side by side comparison of the three types of microwaves based on their price, capacity, and power consumption. Leave a portion of the bowl for cooking vessel uncovered by putting a large amount of pores in between and stir the contents if you can. After removing an item, leave it to stand for two to three minutes. Don't use the microwave for deep frying, canning, heating, base water. Do not use heavy. So there are these points uh, that are extremely important for a consumer to know, right? what kind of vessels you should use in a microwave, why you can't use certain things. Because uh, these guys have that, they still don't have that exposure. And uh, in India, you might want to do it in Hindi, in Tamil, in Brazil, you might want to do it in Spanish. Uh, and you want to make sure that you're targeting this long tail audience who are quickly coming online, who are quickly discovering things uh, because of the internet and smartphone penetration. And you might want to be the first one to actually target them. And uh, these are the videos that are not actually very expensive to make. 
uh, even if you have a video editor sit down and make them or you uh, use a software to do that. So uh, it, identi it just shows that you're identifying the need of the customer, uh, mm -hmm. you actually care for that customer and then customers will always reciprocate. Uh, you know, they will reciprocate with, uh, uh, with buying, uh, with actually building a relationship with you over a period of time and that's how brands are created, right? So, and of course it helps you with discoverability uh, over the internet uh, when you're targeting these things. Uh, the other idea, now this video actually, uh, uh, you know, I had a product review slide and I did not have a video. Uh, so it actually took me nothing more than one and a half minute to create this, right? So think about uh, an app uh, where I'm buying my stuff and then I'm just writing a review that this is the best app ever. Uh, these are the things I bought. This basic motion in an Instagram story or a Facebook story or a WhatsApp story can do the trick. Uh, primarily because all the content that's going out in the world is interactive today. And mm -hmm. this helps you stand out. And it didn't take me, it took me probably 20 cents and two minutes to get, get done with this. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is the content that, you know, uh, a marketer can jump on today if they Look, they're, they're watching the webinar, they jump on it tomorrow uh, and they can have three Instagram stories out tomorrow. In fact, if the processes are right, if your content and your copy is in place and you're transforming that content into great video, uh, an intern can do it. An intern who doesn't cost too much. Right? Uh, really? But again, I'm going to reiterate that if the processes are right, if the content is right, it can happen. Yeah. I mean, I think this is fairly insightful, the fact that how uh, such high quality video content can be created so easily at, uh, you know, at such a low cost, right? Uh, imagine uh, uh, you know, a lot of marketers, including me, right, until recently thought that video making is an expensive proposition and a very expensive proposition which requires us to, to, to call in a production team, call in a crew, Somebody who will edit, direct, shoot, produce, right? All of that is now pretty much gone, right? With uh, with uh, you know, with tools like NVIDIA. So it's like, I'm going to uh, pause here, right? And take a step back. Uh, I remember you speaking about video ads, right? Which is a very interesting proposition, right? Talk to me more about video ads. What, what are video ads and why are they caught again? So uh, I'll be very honest here, right? Uh, there's no direct proof uh, that video ads work better than normal ads uh, because there's so many factors that go into it. Uh, primarily because, you know, your content, your copy. Uh, if, if, I, if I write lines on a video that doesn't resonate with my customer, uh, it's never going to give me the return. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll later look at a Facebook study uh, about, you know, what happened uh, and how they experimented. Because these experiments are always biased. You need to use the right photo. You need to use almost the same photo. You need to have a larger sample set uh, and the, at, at a similar time to actually compare. But uh, I actually am looking at ads overall in life, right? Ad is actually a kiosk when you are entering a store. Considering since we are, you know, going by that analogy throughout uh, this webinar. Uh, so an ad is what? It's a kiosk when you are entering a store. However, this kiosk is tailor made for you primarily because uh, it can, because it's digital, it doesn't require space uh, and it requires more relevance. Uh, so now we are saying that an, if an ad is a kiosk, I'm actually only pairing that particular ad with the, with, with the most powerful medium of communication, which is video. And that's pretty much it. I, you know, I do, of course we can get into numbers and, you know, we can get into research uh, that I already had in a few other slides, but that's pretty much it. It's one of the better mediums to communicate because it gives you more time and it can communicate in a far better place. And it's an ad. I mean, uh, there's nothing more, but uh, you know, uh, the, the several points are that you can convey more information uh, it's perfect for our smaller attention span. It also yeah. actually helps you. Think about it, right? You have a lead. If it's an image, the lead can scroll. If the person has played that video, 
a lead is actually allowing you to communicate whatever you want to for 6 seconds you're not i can't interrupt you i can tell whatever i want to in those 6 seconds or in those 12 seconds uh, and i can move on uh, versus an image is where i can scroll right so it definitely increases uh, helps you increase brand awareness but what works best is actually a bunch of uh, techniques together and not just video so uh, uh, we are not going to say that uh, hey everyone should create a video ad but i'm def definitely going to say that hey 25% 30% of what you are doing can move on to video uh, and then it can scale depending on what works for a market right so mm. right uh, this is very interesting right uh, i've sort of never looked at uh, again your your perspective is, is is truly refreshing right i've never looked at video ads from a kiosk from a live kiosk point of view which is interrupting my attention but still given the fact that i'm i'm giving it permission for, for interruption it has my undivided attention and like an image or a banner which i can just scroll through right there there is a percentage uh, change and i think we all look for that percentage change whenever we are optimizing things and video ads is actually definitely optimizing the normal ads right awesome yeah so so this is very insightful for sure so the kid now um, talk to me more about uh, you know the the facebook experiment which we're speaking about right now why what works what doesn't work what does what does data say about this perfect so great right? again so this is actually a study by facebook uh, it has nothing to do with in video uh, i think uh, and uh, it is it has to be unbiased uh, so uh, facebook did this bunch of experiments that you can see on the left hand side right so they actually tried a static ad for 4 days and then a video ad for 4 days and uh, it drew more visitors to the marketing site now uh, again uh, this started uh, creating static ad for 4 days and then a static ad again for 4 days and it got 1.7x the you know uh, visitors that marketers got normally now again i am going to reiterate right visitors they got 1.7x visitors when they ran video ad first and when they ran a static ad after that it gave them 1.3x the conversions so why did that happen uh, and uh, this is a larger study is where uh, you know the facebook's uh, data team would have done and this is what happened uh, when they uh, tried unbiased testing of things now why does this happen and what are the advantages so uh, of course youtube is a medium where there is no uh, better option than showing an ad uh, a pre roll ad to the video uh, instead of the banners uh, they perform far better than anyone else and several uh, e-tailers whom we work with uh, have confirmed that uh, without giving numbers uh, it definitely performs far better with respect to cac uh, and uh, they and this video ads can also be used much smartly uh, uh, by uh, on publisher sites or on other sites where you can cut out uh, the backdoor deals right so definitely it helps here's the facebook study with what it says and again i'm repeating uh, there is no point of only sticking to video you have to do combination of both however uh, there is one very important thing when it comes to facebook ads right and i want to show you that so you can use a uh, custom audience to retarget people who have watched 3 seconds or 10 seconds or some percentage of your video uh this is amazing right because it's actually giving you that insight uh that you know this guy actually watched your ad for 6 seconds this guy actually watched your ad for 3 seconds which actually allows you to refine your positioning uh refine your messaging uh, understand your drop rates and then retarget the customers depending on uh how much the time they were watching so i think one of the major wins and the largest advantage is actually being able to track who drop when why what should i show him next and that is what uh, video makes it possible okay this is i think this is this is extremely tactical and extremely relevant right uh, for a lot of uh, retailers right small people last doesn't matter but but this piece of advice is extremely important that uh, how does it use use the video consumption behavior to drive further communication right Uh, so get way helpful thanks a lot for that so so get uh you sort of uh, towards the end of the webinar right so uh if you want to sort of uh, 
wrap this right and uh, give give me you know uh, and give the and give the listeners uh, uh, e-commerce video marketing strategy right that stinks the word stinks of marketing consulting but let's sort of just go with it right what would you advise correct so uh, it's actually simple uh, like uh, you know uh, when you look at other things in life so you have to actually decide what your objective is what your budget is where do you fit in uh, you have to align your resources and time uh, however the most important part of this is consistency is everything right so uh, and in fact the largest uh, one of the largest uh, retailer and now uh, i'm talking about walmart uh, says that if you are consistent will walk miles with you and if you are not doesn't matter how smart you are uh, your 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 place is not at walmart so it's extremely relevant to that right consistency is everything and uh, you might want to do less but you want to do it consistently it takes time to show results impatience actually uh, only hurts uh, you want to continuously do it you want to keep tweaking it put a process through it and that is when it works so that's the that's one of the most important things that i would look at do minimum things but be consistent at it right uh, the second thing is you know you want to create some brand guidelines that hey i want to uh, put a couple of review videos i want to wish people independence day uh, in this particular way in this particular format uh, so you want to plan well about what you want to do what are your brand guidelines how you want to communicate but uh, that is just not a a video strategy that's a broader communication strategy that you want to uh, involve in video and then you want to make sure that you enforce those guidelines right so it's not as difficult and when you keep doing it it will you know build your brand reputation it will bring that uh, worthiness uh, the first time you see an ad and then you see a video or you see a banner uh, they will be able to connect with your brand and uh, that is one of the most important uh, parts to look at uh, and this videos can actually be used ev everywhere right website social email so that kind of planning is important so uh, if i had to do video uh, i would not think about doing uh, hey let's do video i would actually take a step back i would decide where i want to do video why i want to do that what are my resources and how can i do it easily so i would actually plan that first and make sure that i do it for a long uh, enough time and after that of course you have to monitor results of video marketing like any other marketing strategy uh, but i might have a broader point to make here so of course you all we all have to monitor everything evaluate the performance of the video content uh, evaluate the uh, you know evaluate the numbers about our banner ads or event or do that about our crm systems uh however uh, the good things to look at is how many shoppers are actually watching those videos and how much are they watching uh, when, uh the moment you think that they are not watching it you might also want to introspect not only your video strategy but also your communication strategy what are you communicating there might be gaps there and how long are users engaging those videos uh why what would be the reason why they would drop off but all of this requires some amount of data uh to uh, go back and look at things right the last thing that actually is in your hands and uh, th this part is actually something where uh, we don't know uh, uh, what the right thing is uh, there are uh, conflicting opinions about how uh, google actually ranks your pages with videos and without it and there are several conflicting opinions uh, in today Uh, today's day and age uh, you know you read uh, neil patel and he'll have to say something and uh, matt cuts would have to say something else but uh, that is one thing that you might want to track which is super trackable right how are your pages ranking now uh, are people embedding your videos are your affiliate uh, systems actually embedding videos on their website and are they working better or not because that is the control that you totally have and uh, uh, that particular metric is actually on the video and not on you except everything else right because the communication is actually on you uh, the products you show to the right audience is on you and these are the factors that you will have to evaluate when you are doing and you have to see you know are shoppers staying longer because of video or not uh, how can i tweak a few things uh, before uh, they show properly because if video is working for 50 brands there is no way it will not work for you unless the demographics are completely different
You right. want to keep refining those processes. So being cons- consistent and being iterative are the two most important things uh, where, uh, you know, uh, I would want to uh, close that. Uh, and when you identify all these things, uh, when you identify what you want to do, how you are going to do it, uh, what is my exact objective is when it becomes crystal clear. And it becomes clearer when you, uh, when you think that, what do I want to tell my customer? What would I, what would I tell my customer in person if I would have met that person or if I would have met her? Uh, and how can I communicate it best via a medium that's close to how I would have communicated? So again, this is awesome, right? Thanks for that amazing rap. Uh, I think that, that, that really Perfect. summed up the conversation uh, very, uh, you know, very aptly, right? So uh, uh, once again, right? Uh, you know, this has been this has been super helpful, super tactical, uh, superbly insightful, right? I uh, I completely agree with, with you on the fact that there is no reason, right, irrespective of you being a small Shopify store owner or you being on a demand first platform, right? You must be. You must. Uh, all retailers of all sizes should look at video or or. To look at using videos as a part of their marketing strategy. All right. So again, uh, again, once again, thanks a lot. Really helpful. Uh, Perfect. Right. Uh, hope to do more of this soon. Okay. Absolutely soon. All Take right. care, Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Cheers.